Hey gang, it's October 2024 and it's release day. This is Bailey Wiki, and as you can see, we've got new toys. Here we are using the new cave and mine uh, spawner tile to actually generate random caves and mine terrains. And in fact, in case you're not quite sure what a spawner tile is, we've got a whole tutorial just came out today on spawner tiles uh, that we'll link in the description here. So now that we've got so many kinds of these spawnable terrains, it's a good time to learn it if you haven't already. But on top of that, we've got a bunch of new cave and goblin settlement decor, loads of new templated scenes to get you started, and a dozen new ready to go modular scenes that leverage all these new assets to really kind of give you inspiration or just give you stuff to play with right out of the box. On top of that, advanced Foundry users get all the new 3D assets, which are really all about interior spaces like taverns and homes, and really some of the best 3D scenes like graveyards with animated assets, this crazy tavern from Severo with two different modes, a, a giant sewer map with interactive elements and a whole bunch more really interesting stuff. Jump to the timestamps to see it. And of course, Dungeon Draft tiers get all the assets that went into this release, including the source map, so you can design this kind of thing for yourself. So with that, let's jump into the detailed walkthrough. Really quick before I move on, there is a, a new thing with Mass Edit that you can do. So remember, if you wanted to make a preset before, you uh, you just hit Shift Q, and that opens up the preset menu, and then you can double click it, and you can start adding things to this. Uh, Adif created a shortcut. So now if you want to make a preset, just grab the thing that you want to build off of and just hit L for link, and it's going to open up this handy little uh, builder menu. You can take everything on this layer and link it up. And it all attaches to this uh, linked object now. And then if you want to undo it, you just press U and that will remove the links from anything that you've got uh, built. So you can really build lots of presets super quickly just using L for link and you for unlink. Okay, so in terms of where to find the new content, as usual, your scenes are all in the 2D or 3D scenes compendium for BaileyWiki, uh, 3D if you're on the premium tier for Patreon. And all of the new uh, tiles and prefabs are in mass edit. So if you just come in here to all and you type in 2024, 10 or October, you can see everything from this release including all of the new tiles and everything else down below. You can also always, if it's the current month, just type in new. And uh, in fact, if you put a hashtag there, it will force the tag name and you can get everything that is new for the month here as well. Okay, so let's go through all of the inventory scenes and we'll jump into some of the pre-made scenes that use all of the stuff that you're seeing here. So caves and mines is one of the big parts of this. You're gonna have all of these um, mine overlay pieces. These all size increase and decrease in size really well. They're made to merge into the spawner tiles that you'll see here in a second. You've also got some holes that, uh, that plop down really well to make things like cave mouths and stuff like that. Then you've got your mine carts and they come in these different varieties. So you've got like these mine carts here. Let's move this up a little bit. You got these mine carts that come with the drop shadow. You probably use those most often. Comes as a brush as well. So if you just come in here and I'm in my tile section and I just say mine cart, you can see you have your different brushes. So if I add this to a brush, I can randomize minecarts around as much as I like. I did put side view minecarts and these ones that are perspective because I do like being able to show that minecarts are like toppled over on a pile of rubble, things like that. So you might end up using these for different reasons. And then you've got different dirt piles, uh, including colorable dirt piles. I just found these are really valuable if you just need to throw dirt down somewhere and uh, maybe you need to make it a different color to match some kind of certain surroundings. You've also got stalagmites. I've got other types of stalagmites in the uh, library, but these are colored and they merge well with this background, which I'll show you here in a second. And then you have these more neutral colors. They're actually semi-transparent. Let's move this up as well. And you can see they pick up the color underneath them. So if you're working with another kind of environment, not these 
uh, even a, a black background, they'll show up and have the highlights that you need, but still pick up some of the background as well. Okay, so the spawner tiles, these are so much fun. There's actually two tiles here. There's a uh, spawner tile underneath, and then there's this overlay tile around it. And you can see it's got some parallax effect as well. I'll show you how I use that here in a second. But if you double click the spawner tile and you adjust the position, you get this that you've seen before, and you can just keep rotating around till you find something you like. The spawner tile is very, very small in this scene. When it's larger, it it opens up more of the the artwork of the tile. But I'll show you here some examples of how you could, you just want like a mine track running through a scene, and you uh, you know maybe you want more of an open area for combat. You can do that here. But if I double click it and change the overlay. You can see I have caves and mines as a whole category. These are huge tiles. So that's a tileable tile, meaning it'll move around and it'll zoom in on any particular area that you want. I also have it as both a mine and a just a regular cave version. So if you want mine tracks, you just pick the new version and it will magically lay mine tracks over it, just like you see here. And we'll see some examples of that here in a second. These are all tileable, so you can really just with the click, create some really customized uh, maps and something that'll give you some information to start with or some some inspiration to start with. We also have a bunch of mushrooms. These are kind of freestanding mushrooms. You've got some that are more embedded into stone. Eventually mushrooms give way to crystals, different varieties of crystals. A little trick that you may not know is if you color any of these uh, red, for example, if you tint them red, I'm going to shift E, mass edit, I'm going to give it a red tint. You can then color these with this as well. Maybe there's a good reason to make it red first, maybe not. Um, but anyway, you can make things different colors just by playing around with that. Next up, we have the Goblin Settlement. So this is a riff off of the vendor stalls that you've seen for the city, but these are much more goblin-y, right? They're gonna have like skulls and things like that that are hanging from them. Um, they're gonna be a lot more tribal. So it doesn't have to be goblins, it can be orcs, it can be tribal stuff, but these are just more rough looking and you know something that you would expect to see. You get some really crazy, you know, kind of bone-based tents here. And so these can just work in a lot of different places and uh, you can just uh, look for a brush we just search for goblin, for example. This brush right here has all of these built into it. So we can just press uh, control shift and we can randomly cycle through all these. They scale really well. You can make them large and small. They don't have interiors. You guys can let me know if you want them, but they actually work really well with the last release, which were huts. So if you uh, grab, you know, bring out a hut, like uh, let's grab maybe a smaller one here as an example. and you put one of these uh, tops on top of it, you can see how if I just make this part of the roof, it just makes that hut look a lot more sort of goblin orcish, right? So you can definitely make those work with huts in a really cool way. We also have these uh, awnings where there's actually tiles underneath and you can't see it because of the black background but there's a shadow underneath there you can just drop these in things like beaches and other stuff you'll be able to have players walk underneath you can put crates or other things to discover under there but it's just a way of creating something that players can easily walk under you've got these uh, movable barricades as well they can be resized in different ways just a lot of reasons for uh, these kinds of barricades they help um, create tactical interest and in things that your players can hide behind and then we've also got these barricades that could be sized differently um, to kind of just build again more tactical variants into a lot of stuff that you're doing. We have all these goblin uh, effigies as well. These go well over torches if you want a torch to be just really crazy and have skulls and things like that on it. Uh, but you can also use them for general decor and stuff if you want something to look just a scene to look a lot more uh, rough and orcish. And then I've got a couple more staffs for you guys to have that uh, just help again tell the story of different kind of uh, people group that might be populating an area.
Okay, then we get into the template. So we have three different cave templates, 1x, 2x, and 3x, and that's just their general size. And they all have a couple of features in common. So you can see they've all got parallax applied to this, this outside ring, uh, this overhead tile, and that's really to help uh, create that sense of, hey, we're, we're in a cave, right? So if I put a player in here, this helps you see the, the general um, size of this one. It's just a 1x room. But your players can you know, actually go underneath here, and it just gives them a sense of claustrophobia. It's a great way to then hide these, um, these lights. These can just give you just lighting up some of the ambiance there, or maybe these are exits or entrances to the cave. You can move these around as much as you like, copy, paste them, that sort of thing. Turn them out if you don't want to use them at all. Uh, just super flexible. They all start off with nighttime um, vision because I just think it works better in a cave. You can certainly bring the lights up, um, but that's why they start out this way. And of course, all of these have the spawner tile built into them. So if you double click it, I'm on the token level, double click it and you randomize it. You can see like, this is great. Like they come in here as a flat area. They've got to jump up top. Maybe there's enemies here. You just keep rotating it around and randomizing it, and it gives you lots of different views into you know whatever you might design. And of course, you can double click it, change the overlay, go to your caves and mines. Let's pick this one. You can see it introduces tracks, and then you can just randomize this one. Find one that you like, maybe zoom in on it a little bit, adjust the position, and maybe that, tra that track's a little too big for our, the size of our player. And that's how you use these. So you can just really create sort of a solid starting point, and then you can drop in crystals and mushrooms and huts and uh, settlement stuff and all that kind of thing. A couple other um, maybe hidden things. It does. They all have um, ambient sound. It's kind of that cave sound just to kind of get you started. And then uh, this overhead tile that surrounds it, right, this right here, if you right click it and if you have multi-phase tiles installed, uh, you can actually get other versions of it. So this one has um, goblin settlement stuff built into it. This idea that they're, they're up in the rafters of this cave kind of uh, looking down. And then you have a crystal one as well that's got some crystals coming out at the top. Again, depending on what you're trying to build down below, you can have that sort of um, enhance your uh, your experience. And they do have uh, parallax tiles installed as well. So you can adjust this, the effect, you can turn it off if you want to, as much as you like. The 2x and the 3x caves are the exact same thing, just larger in size. So you can really create some huge new creations just by using the cave templates. And of course, there are also mines as well, if you use the mines. Then I also have two goblin settlements. These are not tileable, they're not smart, uh, meaning you can't change them around, but they're just really super flexible. They've got built-in settlement stuff all the, all already in them. And then they've got these large areas where you can drop in things like huts and other stuff. And you'll see examples of that later. You can drop buildings in on the tops here. You can drop them over, over the artwork and you know change what's being displayed here as much as you want. The 2x version is the same thing, just much larger. You can see the scope of a, a single square here. So if you want to make a large goblin or orc settlement, you can do that uh, with this as well. Maybe maybe it's humans. Maybe they're uh, smugglers down here, that kind of thing. Getting into the pre-made scenes, this is the sunlight cave. The idea is your party members find themselves fallen through a hole. There's um, maybe something that uh, allowed sunlight in. There's all these different effects and they've got some ambient sounds. They'll hear a little bit of dripping in the background, but just shows you how you can use these different assets. If you have something like Tile Sort from Ripper installed, you can see all the different pieces, right? So like these uh, pawns are just tiles and can be removed. Um, but all of these like jungle undergrowth pieces, how everything came together. The Dark Pillar is taking one of the scene templates and dropping in some of these crystals, right? 
adding a little bit of light, some FX master effects to shine around them. And then in the middle, we've actually got three of those crystals as tiles stacked on top of each other, and then a uh, effect applied. So if I go to the, uh, this is in nuts and bolts, TMFX edit, you can see the animation applied to the dodge um, token magic effects filter. And it gives you this cool uh, little, you know, idea of some magic pillar that's hovering or maybe coming out of the depths below and your players um, can have a nice little effect there to enjoy. You can see all the pieces that make this up in case you want to deconstruct this and make any changes. The crystal caves are just a must have. You're going to want a crystal cave at some point in your adventure and I just create a couple of different versions so your you know players can either have a sort of a warm or a cold version of it. Right. And it's also to help you see how you can change these are the same assets, just with some lighting and tint effects applied to them. And you've got, you know, a, uh, you know, completely different scene to work with. Some of these are overhead crystals, just to, again, um, build that sense of, of depth. And, you know, these are very much in the foreground and your players might encounter a crystal golem or something else as they navigate the, the depths. Got a series of goblin settlements uh, maps here. This one's a relatively large one. Here's our player. And you can navigate this uh, the settlement here. It's got some ambient noises for a settlement. Things are smart here. You can snuff things, these things out. They can go into the shaman's hut. This is from the last release, right? And they might have a, a goblin shaman or king or something like that in that area. They can come over here and find this maybe entrance into like a Mycanid colony, um, but just shows you how you can use some of these mushrooms uh, that are colored and then tinted purple and using some lighting. There's walls and other things around here. So this is really a, a scene meant for your players to sort of explore and discover. Other areas of a goblin village, maybe this is a larger village. Uh, you can just see how the different assets are laid around. You can see all the foreground assets. Uh, you can see we dropped in a uh, stalagmite here and grew it very large. There's actually a region here uh, that uses Terrain Mapper, which is a module that when your players walk off the region, they will be descended down into kind of normal height. And if they climb the mountain, it will put them up to 40 feet. And these are all just made with tiles. You guys can do the same thing, make any modifications. Uh, here's a another sort of uh, mushroom cave. This one happens to be an herbalist, be a goblin herbalist, having too many mushrooms. Just takes advantage of the huts from the last release and adding some goblin sort of effect to the top of it. The goblin taxidermist. Again, just using other releases, but adding some of these, these new assets to it. There's a border crossing, just uses a completely different, this is an underground, maybe it is underground, it's up to you. Um, but, you know, it's got this, you know, really thrashed uh, terrain that players might have to either defend or get through. Uh, these defenses, you've got a couple of watchtowers that are levels enabled so your players can shoot from above or try to get through there. You've got a little campsite. Uh, all these buildings and tents can be entered. Some things are smart. You can be toggled on and off. You've got a uh, maybe a supply wagon or something like that. Back to the mines. This time we're back underground. We're looking at, at the mines. This is just used the random tile spawner to generate what I thought was kind of a cool particular view. Then you've got these animal bones and holes that have been dug through here. And maybe that's an egress to another map. Maybe you fight a battle here. You've got some ruins built into this artwork. So maybe that's a draw for your players, something they can discover. Here's the old mine, Dead Man's Gulch, playing around with uh, overhead tiles here and different degrees of parallax so that they move around and you know here's some webs and other things up in the rafters that your players can appreciate they can walk underneath these things it's super fun and nice 
And uh, here I also have a working set of mine cars. So these are actually linked together and you can see this player is moving with them. So these mine cars actually do have the special link capable regions. This is something that MassEdit enables, but they're all now one unit, including this light and they can be moved around. They cast shadows, other things that you might find interesting if you notice the kind of the subtlety of some of the effects here. Hey, you can put your players in there and uh, move them along the track if you like. Last two maps are just showing, um, again, this just starting with that starter set, you can create things like this, right? So you want a, you know, Mykonid colony, you want a mushroom adventure, you can throw those things together super easily with the right lighting and you're good to go. Same general idea here. This time we put a pond over in the corner. Players might discover something coming out of that pond or maybe there's some interesting properties to that pond. But just to give you more inspiration on how you can design these things really, really easily. You can see all the different tiles that went into making this particular scene work. Hi guys, Swift here again to talk about the 3D side of our release this month for October. It's that time of year again, time for the spooky maps to come out. So this month we've got a couple of spooky styled maps, some graveyards, some tombs, some crypts. Starting with this one here, this one is by DigiDM and it is the graveyard. It is a uh, multi-tiered sort of map as you can see, we've got a lower level full of mist and then a higher level accessible by stairs. We've also got a couple of little bits and pieces that are new like um, animated assets, like these gates here, as you can see, sort of swinging in the wind, that can also be used as doors normally. And then we've also got several other things around, like we've made versions of these um, mausoleums with doors that you can now open and close with a click. They're sort of like doors, but it's an animated object, as it were. But then we've also got things like these obelisks, which are animated to smash into pieces. Very nice. And then if you want to reset them, you can just click them and it should come back together. That's probably not going to occur during a con, but uh, uh, you never know. Um, we've also got a couple of openable sarcophagi as well. In this case, with some moving things underneath them there. So overall, this map's showing off a couple of the extra things we'll be adding in. The good old-fashioned statue of the dubious-looking person at the end of a spooky-looking passageway. This is one of those maps that I think is quite useful for a wide variety of scenes. On the same vein, let's have a little look at the next map. This next one is the Autumn Grave Site. Similar sort of idea. We've got this lovely little diorama-style map up here with the... Uh, large mausoleum with the openable door. Inside are some sarcophagi and stairs down. I put a token down there because the lower part of the map is an underground burial chamber. Lots of open space here, so this is good for any size of uh, encounter. This would be good for a kind of uh, boss encounter with a lich or something. If we include the previous graveyard, it could be that the party are fighting their way through it to arrive here to stop the rise of whatever it is that's been causing mischief. But overall, I think this is a pretty stylish kind of map here. And of course, always love the autumn style effects here, like the leaves scattered around the place. The trees have already lost most of their leaves. I think it's just a great aesthetic. This one is a bit less Halloween themed, but is a rather cool one by Lettuce, just called Floating Isles. And as you can see here, is based on these groups of floating islands around this central tower leading up to a uh, small building here with a lab I should probably get rid of. But this is a good map for any sort of aerial uh, encounter since there is a lot of verticality to it. Like we've got the towers down here obviously and then up above we've got some higher islands that are high up enough that they're cold enough to be snowy. Still colonized by someone, of course. But this is a very stylish kind of map, I think. I've always got a soft spot for floating islands and all that sort of thing. Adventures in the sky. 
though it can be pretty hard to uh, represent them in a lot of campaigns. 3D kind of gives us an opportunity to do that a little bit easier. And in cases like this, well, just got some floating rocks in the sky. So I think this one's definitely one of my favourites from this month, but let's keep on looking at the maps here. This next one up is the Dragon Snake Inn, and you can probably see why it's called that. We've got a circular tavern building here, surrounded by a snake creature. Whether or not it is a live one or just some great statue is up to you. The structure itself is obviously got an interior going on here. We've got some exterior bits, tables, chairs and all that. And I've got a token inside. They've got it set up so that the roof has the clipping shader on it. So that if you have a token inside, then, you know, the roof is kind of cut away. And then the walls act as, uh, you know, walls for blocking line of sight and that sort of thing. So we've got a large main area, more than big enough for a bit of a bar brawl, a bit of a stage over there in the corner for the local bards, and then a quite detailed back room as well. If we have a look back here, chock-a-block with barrels, crates and packages, all that sort of thing, with again the walls and so on cutting away as your camera moves near them, just so you can actually see. And then of course you've got a bit of a secret wall going on, since there's this room back here that you seemingly can't get to. But these barrels here, you can turn invisible like a traditional uh, 3D canvas door and then just kind of like come on through into the secret room, which could either be the adventurer's planning room or perhaps a uh, room kept by the owner of the inn for their own purposes. Overall, though, definitely the kind of map that I'd like to see more of, for sure. Just sort of, taverns are, they're a bit of a meme. You know, the whole adventure starts in a tavern type thing. But they are a really good place for adventures to happen, I think. So if we have maps where they're well represented, then we can get some good variety of stories going on. And then if we include things like the back rooms and all this back here, then that just adds to the functionality of the place, you know. Perhaps there's some shenaniganery going on in the storage room here. Maybe someone's broken into the window, or maybe someone's run away through that way. I should note as well that um, this was all made with, or well, the structure of the building was made with tools inside 3D Canvas. Like the walls here were made with the uh, dungeons and interiors tool, and then obviously the floor was as well, just with a big circle. It's actually really easy to create this sort of building in any of your own maps, and then it's just a matter of throwing furniture down to kind of decorate it and make it more clear what it is exactly. But yeah, that's the Dragon Snake Inn, another one by Letters. Let's have a look at the next one. This next one's a bit of a collab between Severo and Letters. This is the City Sewers map which is a nice big explorable one. We'll start over here towards what appears to be the entrance of the map. And uh, something that you always like to see, we've got a lever here that if you click on it, it'll give you a prompt asking if you want to open or close the drain gate. And if we open it, and you can see down there, the gate opens and the one flooding in closes. And it drains the water from the place, leaving green sludge around the floor, but making the area passable via this side passage here down the stairs. So that's an alternate way to get across that area, and also drain the water in this area over here. Useful for various reasons. And you can also close the drain gate, which will cause it to close back up again and flood in from over here. and cover up all those stains down below. Over here, there's a passageway between some waterfalls. I think just looks really cool. And this is another one of our animated um, assets here, this bridge, where if you activate it, it'll crumble. And then, of course, if you want to reset it, you can uh, re-click it and it'll just uncrumble there. Nice and easy to reset for testing things. I think that's an important thing that a lot of DMs appreciate. If we go over here, let's see, we've got the crack into the abyss, of course. The radioactive looking sewage, which is probably a good reason why someone might not want to come this way. 
and then through more basins to a campsite in the middle of the map. This one's just a nice traditional fire and some bedrolls with more of those radioactive looking flows. Something else we've got here is a bit of a secret area without using any secret doors because the players will probably be able to see that we've got some grates here and in between there's quite obviously a passageway. But these grates aren't doors at all. However, if they're paying attention, they might notice over here that the water goes under the wall and there's actually enough room for them to pass through underneath if they don't mind getting a bit wet. And that'll give them access to this room here, which will then go on through across this precarious looking bridge area, sort of bridge area, and then over to the treasure room, as we're calling it, which of course currently contains a rather impressive looking sword embedded in coals. Very nice. That's the kind of thing that campaign hooks are made of. Otherwise, we have yet more passageways. The secret room within the secret room here leads to this camp with a frozen troll of some description, or it may be a live one, depending on how things are going for you. Perhaps it's lair there. And then, of course, there's the treasure room over here, though this has a uh, bit of a secret to it. If I put out a token here, so if I have a token and then I try to walk into this room here, It'll actually trigger an animated floor tile here that will collapse through into, well, a large area full of spikes. Rather nasty. And then, of course, token can go down there and deal with the fact that they are now stuck down there. This is another one of the animated assets that we've been fiddling with recently. But if they somehow manage to avoid that, then the treasure is theirs. And you should be able to reset this just by clicking on it. Yep, there we go. Like I said, very useful for DMs to be able to reset that sort of thing. And that is the city sewers map. A large one. You could definitely spend quite a while in here. I know how uh, dungeon crawls can go, depending on how tightly you pack this thing with monsters and puzzles. But for now, let's look at a place that's maybe a little bit more comfortable. Next up is a very fancy tavern by Severo, the Gilded Barrel. And this is another one of those two-tiered type taverns. Lots of tables and chairs around the place. A big circular central bar, which I think is... I just really like circular bars. As an aesthetic, I think. The multi-level thing is also good. It means that you can have areas that seem a little bit more private than the lower down areas. Like, for example, if the tavern owner themselves are the ones contracting the adventurers to do some work for them like in a couple of APs that you might have played, they could be asked to pop up here, into these booths, away from the noise and hustle and bustle down below. There's another one of these animated things over here as well. This one's nice. It's literally just an animated clock. It'll just sit there and tick away. It's a little bit of movement, I think, that's a good way to kind of make any scene seem more alive. Like anyone who's ever used animated textures for any of their maps, just a little bit of something moving around. So this map is rather cosy indeed. We've also got a alternate version of this one since it is coming up for Halloween. And this is the Halloween version of the Gilded Barrel. As you can see, a little bit of redecorating, but mostly with bloodstains and cobwebs and floating candles. I think the whole slowly moving green fire type thing is one of those Halloween aesthetics that is a little bit underused, I think. Despite the fact it may seem a bit over the top, this is another one of those examples of using uh, just one effect, really. This green fire here, maybe two with the mist, to give the place a whole different look. And then, of course, scattering things about. I think it's surprisingly useful how just taking some furniture and then tipping it onto its side and rotating it around can make a place look abandoned or devastated by something. The cobwebs, of course, are also just good to throw in anywhere, really. But yeah, that's the Halloween version of the Gilded Barrel. I think this one's pretty cool, actually. I can see this either being a place that has actually been overtaken by some sort of necromantic cult, or maybe the tavern owners just wanting to dress the place up a bit for Halloween. Either way, let's move on. This one is one by Dr. Albi, 
and is one that I'm probably quite biased towards because I just rather like wintry scenes. But this is a nice, simple mountain valley with a frozen river through it. The thing about scenes like these is that there's not usually much you can say about them because they are really simple. But because they're really simple, you can use them for any sort of encounter, really. You've got two ends of a straight map, a nice open surface for people to move along, possibly include some ice mechanics, if that's your bag, and then a little bit of high ground up here for anybody to be throwing down attacks on the people below, and then, of course, some nice fog and snow for a little bit of flavour. Overall, one of those simple but effective situations, I think, here. Though, speaking of effective, this one's another Dr. Albi map, The Narrow Alleys. I think this one might be one of my favourites from this release this month. It's a great use of the buildings that we had in a recent release to create narrow alleys, as you might have guessed. We've got some very narrow passages that are admittedly a little bit difficult to see down, though you can get some really moody kind of effects going way down into them here. Dank, damp alleyways in the depths of the city. We've got enough light to just about illuminate things. Keep them visible. Got a square area over here with presumably access to the road and then alleys with dead ends. Closed off square areas here where more interesting things might occur. And then across various corners we've also got this little place off to the side. And opening down into the sewers, which would probably be a good link in to the city sewers map this month. or any other sewers map we might have available, of course. I think people often malign sewers as being overdone, but they're another one of those map types that are just so omni-useful. Maze-like environments where you could believably encounter all manner of things. But yeah, this is a quite deceptively large map, considering a lot of it is so hemmed in. And of course, all the buildings are here too, so you can also have rooftop encounters here too. That's another dimension that I think people often overlook. I can see this being quite useful for things like athletics checks to jump across alleyways or maybe to stop themselves from sliding down the slippery roof slats. Always nice to add a little bit of drama with a little bit of fall damage I think. Overall though, a pretty slick map I think. Quite a nice one. And a nice little bit of skyline here. I mean, if you can call it skyline really. So, with those scenes out of the way, onto the inventory for this month. We're going for a interior kind of thing this month, with a bunch of interior structure pieces, and then some interior furniture to kind of decorate them with. So, as you can see, this is the structure scene. What we've basically got is a whole load of walls in various different styles and shapes. So, you know, plaster wall with window, plaster wall with door, wooden wall with window, wooden wall with door etc. And these are for making scenes that are supposed to be interiors. They do have backsides, so you can put them in scenes and have things on the other side of them, but they're kind of optimized for interior scenes. Like they might work in exterior scenes, possibly, could work. Well, let us know how that goes. Um, got some supplementary pieces of the various walls, like bottoms and tops and edges. And that sort of thing. This is mainly for like adding, filling in little gaps and details, that sort of thing. Doors, of course. Pillars, because every scene needs pillars. They're great for all sorts of things. Stairs as well, um, for, you know, different elevation things. And these stairs are made of different parts. Like this platform here is a piece. These railings are a piece. Uh, these railings are a piece. The stairs themselves are a piece. And there's like a, a backing to these stairs that's a separate piece as well. So, you know, you can just kind of do that as you like. Um, also got a couple of railings, a couple of walls. Good for the edges of gaps down to lower floors, obviously. And then some floor pieces, which we've all seen floor pieces before, but these ones, you've got some kind of broken ones. And the idea is with these, if you set these two not um, auto-ground, so basically, auto ground untick. Then what will happen is you'll have you'll have the gizmo here in line with the floor, so that you can line this up, just snap it to the grid along with all your other floor pieces, and then you can have this hole in the floor that leads down to, by default, just you know the foundation to kind of show that it's a falling apart building. But obviously, you could put things down there, spikes, acid, 
magic runes, rats. That's always a good one. Etc. So, you know, got a very wide variety of structural pieces here. Let's have a quick look at the furniture. And this is the first slot of furniture that we're going to be adding in to go with these kind of interior pieces that we showed back there. So we've got the usual kind of things you would expect. Shelves, some with stuff on them, various shapes and sizes of tables. Um, a lot of rugs and carpets. I think rugs are one of those things that would really add to a lot of scenes. Like if you're making a large space and you've got a floor that's just a big kind of repeating texture or something, or it just looks a bit empty, I think if you just throw down a rug, you can really improve a lot of scenes. Also got hanging pennons and that sort of thing, curtains with various windows, fireplaces, the usual sort of stuff. Um, something I quite like is down here, these tavern tables. Uh, these will just snap together, so you can just, you know, take a short piece, drag that over, snap it on, and then you've got a nice L-shaped bar. Easy as that. Always love that sort of thing. Uh, miscellaneous furniture over here as well, you know. Various cabinets, chest of drawers, that sort of thing. Shelves with stuff again. More seating, more variety of seating. And then just a whole bunch of beds with various different like headboard styles. And then also um, bedding as well, obviously. So these are good if you're doing things like taverns, say, and you just need a lot of beds. You don't want them all looking identical because that just kind of looks a bit odd. So you can kind of mix and match these, throw them in there, get a little bit more variety in your scene. Along with things like the different rugs and carpets and that sort of thing, just to kind of vary the colour in a scene. But that's a very quick look at the new assets and maps we'll be bringing in this month. As ever, any questions or comments or anything like that, I'd love to hear them. If you drop them down in the comments below or on our Discord, as always. For now, though, I'll see you guys later. Okay, for the Dungeon Draft users, uh, you're going to get the Caves and Mines file so you can browse everything and see how a lot of the things were built with this release. The main thing you're going to get is a new asset pack called Goblin Caves, the base 11 Goblin Caves. There's not the only one that was updated. So you'll find updates in Natural and Artificial B and some others. You can get the whole list from the easy download table. Uh, also, what you won't notice necessarily is gems, crystals, and geos. This was also updated, just uh, increased the colorability of those. So in case you want to use those in some of your caves and other things, you can. As usual, you get uh, a number of inventory scenes and then all the way up to things that were built. And you can just click on any of these. If you have Essential Utils mod, you can see exactly which uh, thing it came from, what it's called, that kind of thing, in case you're looking for those later. You get all of the um, overlay pieces that come together and they merge with a lot of the new textures that we've introduced. There are more textures than you see here. Uh, specifically, for example, you see a lot of the textures that made this up. If I go to Terrain Brush, you can see um, in the new Goblin Cave, you have all these different textures that are tileable. You can paint them together and do a lot of really cool, varied um, sort of starters to what your scenes will be. Also have these dirt floors that are not only patterns, but also textures. They also make it really easy to paint these scenes. Um, so there's some of the dirt floor and you can just like remove and flatten out areas that you like to flatten out. And it uh, couldn't be easier to work with. So I'm just flattening this area out just by painting over it. And now I've got a completely different terrain that I started with. And you can choose from, you know, very, very flat uh, and, you know, progressively more, you know, footprints or indentations, that kind of thing. All of your mine carts in different configurations, in case you want to have them, as you will see, falling into a chasm or turned over on the side. I've got this really nice bridge that you can do in a lot of places, but I also turned it into a path. So you can um, create walkways and bridges all over the place, including some new fences that I really just used components of the bridge to build uh, fences that I think are super usable in a lot of different places. All the wood barriers that you can add to your scenes, and then all of the stalagmites that are in both this fully colored version as well as this semi-transparent version that picks up uh, whatever you have them sitting on top of. So you can use these 
um, in more than one place. You can have them sitting on top of this kind of ground and it'll pick up some of that color, for example. I've also got some new cave wall paths that you can play with, including some crack paths that are super helpful and useful. And then you have all these Minecraft, or Minecraft, you have all these mine track paths as well. You have complete paths, but if you want to make them a little bit more varied and interesting, if you want to put dirt around them, things like that, I've split them into pieces. So you can have tracks on one level, put some dirt under those, have the uh, wood planks and some dirt under those, and you can see a little bit later how I use that. You also, of course, have all the goblin settlement components. I did create, you know, just sort of separate awnings where I thought those might be useful as standalone objects. You can um, butt these things up together, add some effigies, and just really generally have some great textures to add to all of your maps. These are great components if you want to uh, just add things that are, you know, very animalistic and have bones and leather and stuff to your scenes, just good textures to to play around with. And they come in sort of matching sets. So you can make a whole scene just you know with these, for example, kind of fur and leather and bone uh, versus maybe some of these that are a little bit more kind of exotic looking. And of course, all the mushrooms in the caves crystals in, or the crystals and geodes. Some of them are colorable in case you want to get creative. Lots of different colorable versions, but they're also in these sort of sets where if you want to stay with the same aesthetic, you can, or you can very much mix your geologies and uh, make interesting scenes that way. Then we get into the spawner tiles that I created. You can see how I did these. You can deconstruct them, but you can see like this object was mirrored in each corner. And that's what helps make this whole thing tileable, right? This object is mirrored over here. And so the objects are mirrored, the um, the painting of the background is mirrored, and you do end up having to do some touch up later, but for the most part, every edge is mirrored to itself. And that's how you can create uh, those types of things. And of course I wanted to have uh, train tracks going over a particular level. So if I have, I have that reference level under there, you can see how the train tracks go across and then you can just export this whole picture, which is still tileable, you notice the train tracks start here, they come out there. The train track starts at the top, comes out the bottom. These are tileable still. So that's how you can generate multiple versions of one tileable image. Same thing here, just different ways of building the caves. Uh, these are overlays. So I get rid of that. Here's how we built the overlays and your goblin settlements. So hopefully this helps. It, this is so much fun. These are really, really easy to work with and they work with a bunch of the other things uh, in previous releases. So I hope you guys have fun uh, creating and uh, using these cave assets to build some really cool stuff. Okay, that's it for the release for this month. Buckle up for next month. I think we'll be ready to unveil some uh, face melting stuff for you. We've been working on something really new and interesting. If uh, you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you want to just help people find the channel, feel free to ask us down below in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, if there's something you want us to design or build in a future release, we'd love to hear that stuff as well. You'd be surprised how often I take that and run with it. So with that, I hope you guys have fun with all this new stuff, and I hope you have fun making your maps.